Hello and welcome to this beard clipper video. Now this is the full build video for the flying ship dragged by a dinosaur attacked by pirates diorama that I made, I had such fun making. I've also done a shorter video, just finished the edits, about 10 minutes long, which pulls this together and does it a little bit sharper. That'll be linked up here somewhere and also in the description below and at the end of the video. So if you do want something a bit shorter, then you can watch that. But I really enjoy doing these full videos and I know a lot of people enjoy watching or having it on in the background while they're hobbying. So I'm gonna continue doing these, whatever the uh, whatever happens with the rest of the uh, of the channel and maybe having a few more more professional edits coming in let me know in the comments what you think let me know if you like the video let me know if you do something different i always reply to all my comments so just say hi if you want to and i uh, hope you enjoy the video and i will see you again at the end what have i got inside the box well let me show you it is a humongous 3d printed model that i have spent a long time like weeks <laughs> feels like printing um, I will try to remember to put on the screen exactly how many hours of printing this took because I did take a note of it but I don't have it to hand and this is a Quetzalcoatlus towing a flying barge that I've not cleaned up very well yet as you can see and yeah it comes in lots of parts <laughs> lots and lots and lots of parts <clears throat> So I am going to be assembling and painting this very slowly. I do not feel any major rush. I want to do it right. And I will bring you along for that ride. And as I say, it was a big job. Now I've not actually printed everything yet because I still need to print the little um, like stands that mount it. So I kick the, kick the camera, let's move that there. That's all of it. So yes, I do need to kick, uh, to kick, to print the stands, the clear stands for it to fly on. Uh, but I don't feel any hurry either to do that. I'll probably do that absolutely last. Or if I come across something else, I want to print with the, with the clear resin. But you can see here that we have Quetzalcoatlus and two wings. I've already done a little bit of gluing as I've glued the head on. Uh, the neck then this actually goes around the neck there and he ends up towing this incredible contraption which really is an incredible contra contraption now i've not done a very good job cleaning this up so there's actually going to be a bit more clean up than i wanted to i've left some of the little trees on here as you can see um which is a bit of a shame i thought i got them all um but yeah this all this all kind of like joins together into one big long um amazing flying thing so yeah it will take me some while i'm gonna start gluing it together probably what i'll do is i will glue the rest of quets quetzalcoatlus together i will glue probably the body of the actual flying thing together once i've finished tidying up all the mist sprues um, <clears throat> and then i'll probably paint the wings um, and and the um, little kind of um, harness the word I was looking for, the harness separately, um, uh, and do that as like four different kind of like sections. Um, so I'll bring you along, uh, I'll show you how that goes, and uh, hopefully it will look amazing because this is obviously just a display model. Um, but yeah, I had to print it, it is too cool. So I've cleaned that up, and I've noticed that I was actually assembling things upside down because that is clearly the back, and this is clearly a uh, kind of pavilion that sits on the where the uh, where the, the boss man stands and so that's separate that's changed my idea again i'm probably going to paint this separately to the rest of the boat um, and you can see here that i have a stack of sections which are going to go together very nicely like so and i'll be able to glue probably what i'm going to do now is glue those four sections together right now leave them overnight and then I will glue them onto this back section because I'm going to need to kind of like support it a little bit so that it's actually upright um, and um, wedge it in place. I think that's probably the best way to do it rather than to have to keep wedging and keep balancing. That's all vertical. This is going to be the only one that's going to be tough or I could even like have it on something soft so that it's uh, supported all the way along. Whatever, I'll come to that. I'm rambling, shut up. 
Uh, so yes, I'm gonna print, uh, gonna glue those together and leave them overnight um, and then finish and then I'll glue this on at the end and then we'll pretty much be ready apart from, I need to glue on the wings of the Quetzalcoatlus. Uh, there's gonna be a fair bit of filling to do as well. Uh, so um, I'll get all that done. Uh, once this is all glued uh, and I'm coming to glue this, I'll show you how I'm gonna do the balancing. I think that makes sense. So yeah, I'll probably finish up here for tonight. I made a bit more progress on this, which is really, really cool. Um, what I've done is I've done the green stuffing, as you can see. So the green stuff is there all the way around the body, all the gaps underneath and everything. Uh, and I've also put some of the wings on. I'm not putting all the wings on because it won't stand up if I do that, uh, and that'll be a pain. Uh, so this one here, which is dead center in the bottom, will have to be painted separately. Uh, I'm also gonna paint the canopy separately, which eventually will sit there. Um, so yeah, so the next step for this that I need to do is I need to sand down any bits of green stuff once it's all dry, um, which will be tomorrow now. Um, I did some of this earlier today um, and did the gluing in. Uh, I might need to do a little bit of filling as well, as you can see, just around these uh, these holes. Um, and then once that's sanded down, then prime and paint. Hey. <laughs> Um, and I've also got obviously the Quetzalcoatlus and the um, actual harness. The harness goes from the from the prow here. Um, and then I've got the rest of the diorama to do. This is going to be quite a long project. It's going to take me a long time, particularly with the limited amount of time which I have at the moment. I want to populate this. I want to put some figures on. I'm not entirely sure which ones I'm going to use yet. I have some ideas, but yeah, I'm going to work that out slowly. But what I do know is that from the same Kickstarter, there were some pterodactyls which had some uh, like primitive types riding them. Uh, and so I'm gonna have three of them. I printed them already, I printed them anyway. So I'm gonna have those and the plan is that they will be coming in and kind of trying to attack this, which is uh, maybe a, um, a trade ship or something like that, or a merchant. Um, and so there'll be a rich merchant or that sort of thing will be on this with maybe some uh, guards. Um, and then there'll be three pterodactyls coming in attempting to uh, attempted to capture it like pirates, so pretty cool. So yeah, really pleased that I managed to get a little bit of time with this. I'm very little limited in my hobby time, so just to get a little bit of green stuffing every now and then and to get it finished is really cool. Um, and I think it's gonna look great when it's done. So let that dry and then sand it. Uh, I'll bring you back for the painting stage, probably show you how it's going um, and to then look, show you when it's finished. Um, I'm, it's not gonna be very interesting. I'll just paint it out of painted wood. <laughs> so yeah, so we'll get that done. Um, and then the main fun will be on the diorama. Another quick in progress for this. As you can see, I've painted some of the detailing on the uh, wings or cloth details. Uh, I've also done that, which is on the top of this, which uh, sits on here. Um, and also the um, little bit that actually goes underneath the bottom that I've not glued on because it will just be too unstable. Uh, I've also made some progress, I can't remember whether I filmed this or not yet, uh, but I've made some progress on the actual um, pterodactyl which will be attacking in the diorama. Um, thanks to my mate Steve for the idea on the purple and dark red, and I think it looks really nice. Um, so you can see I've done that on, on these. Uh, let's put the last one up just for completeness. Um, and I've also put a little bit of colour on the actual riders, um, but that's what's going to be next. So yeah, so good progress there. Uh, doing it in my 20 minutes. Um, this week has been particularly difficult, and so I've actually missed a couple of nights uh, for various reasons. Uh, but still pushing on, and uh, very happy to be getting this progressing particularly. Um, also, I've got a load of stuff which it can potentially be um, like on top of the as cargo on the on the boat so uh, a load of different bits of scatter terrain that I've uh, just printed out and I'm painting up as well for that so yeah there's been quite good progress actually on this um, and uh, I'll finish off painting that and then it'll be time to start the actual diorama I started priming these up last night but I was trying to do them on uh, blue tack and they really weren't sticking very well I kept on having to catch them and stuff so um, I did get them primed but what I've done just now is come along glued them down with some super glue to these wooden sticks so that I can then uh, paint them properly later on so these are going to be the um, not all of them obviously there's a lot um, but I'll probably paint them all up and then I'll pick the ones I want best um, which will be the people that are actually on the boat so the um, there's the traders and a couple of guards so I'll probably pick four or five out of this 
whole set to put on there and the rest will go into the uh, stash for use on another project um, but yeah and that's just a little tip um, that I use just to glue things to tongue depressors and then it's really easy to paint them especially these smaller miniatures that aren't going to stay on other um, holders very easily so here we are we've finally I've finally finished doing all the painting for this project and I'm going to start to assemble it so let me briefly talk you through what we've got and uh, what my ideas are so you can see that the ship is pretty much done um, in its basics. I've got a couple of parts that are separate here. So this here is the um, roof for that section. And this here is the keel which goes in underneath. But I can't put that in until later because I don't want it to break off. What I've also done is a whole bunch of um, items which could maybe be part of the, um, on the deck, uh, and illustrative of its cargo. So we've got some money bags and some chests and some crates and some barrels and other bits and pieces. I won't necessarily use all of these, um, they're just there for, for that. So the actual Quetzalcoatl is there and painted up with its uh, harness on. That harness is not yet glued, uh, but that is uh, how the, this particular ship is uh, towed. And uh, I'll be looking at positioning that quite nicely. Um, what we have here are the three attackers. So they're flying on pterodactyl and they have their bows. And then we come to the crew, which is what I've just finished doing now. So uh, pretty pleased with this. So on the left, we've got the owner. This is the rich man who owns the boat. He's the merchant and potentially his wife or his mistress or whatever, or just someone who's along for the ride. Here we have someone who is gonna have an arrow in their chest and is gonna be falling off the edge of the boat. <laughs> so that, that's the idea there. We have some hired hands, some mercenaries, that are going to be protecting um, and ready to fight off um, and uh, potentially these two here are potentially more less mercenaries maybe part of the crew um, this one I just love with the kind of crazy um, dog type creature uh, so these are going to be on the ship ready to defend it against these pirate types who are coming on their pterodactyls so yeah, I'm very pleased with how it's looking. I'm really looking forward to getting it all together and I have absolutely no idea how I'm gonna arrange it. So this is gonna be a real challenge. So I've been thinking about this while not working on it for a little while, just let it settle in my head and try and work out how I'm gonna do it. Because this is a complete departure on something I've done before. Uh, I want to have this suspended. I don't want it to go too high. I want it to be still a shelf layout or shelf display, but I do want this to be in the air. I do want them to be flying. <laughs> which I don't know how I'm going to do. And I've had some thoughts, like I said, I've been really considering it and mocking it up in my head virtually. And I've now decided to pull the shelf out that's going to go on, which is this, and actually lay things out. Now, the size of the shelf is almost perfect to just about fit the ship with the, um, uh, with, with, with its towing dinosaur, um, Quetzalcoatl, there we are, that's the name. Um, and yeah, so it fits in almost perfectly, which is really good. Now, what's going to happen is the Quetzalcoatl is probably going to be kind of like f l flying um, and trying to lift. So I want to have the ship pointing down and then the Quetzalcoatl will be kind of flying up as if it's in distress. Then over here we have dude who is going to be having been shot, going to have an arrow and will be falling off the side of the ship. So that will be in the middle there. We then have the attackers. This is where it gets complicated because I want to have uh, one of the um, attackers here. Um, I've got this other one here which is, I would think, probably going to be coming in maybe even from over the top, and that is even more complicated to do. I don't know how I'm going to do that at the moment. And then finally I've got the one which is, um, she, she, who is in mid-air, and I probably want to have the... So this is going to be quite complicated as well because we'll have the... Uh, I mean, I can maybe glue her onto this with one foot, but I was thinking about having her in mid-air, um, and having like the, uh, so she's jumped off of her pterodactyl to kind of try to get onto the ship. So those are the external elements to the ship and I'm thinking about wire and I'm thinking about maybe using polyfiber or um, something to do clouds um, and to make a, um, and so I can hide the, some of the wires, I'm not going to hide them all and I'm not going to panic too much, but these ones will almost certainly be able to be done with wire. Now this 
clearly won't <laughs> because it's heavy uh, and bulky. So what I might need to do is build a framework of what, or a cradle of wire struts to hold it on and then pack those around with, um, with, with, the, with the polyfill, which might not be great, but that's all I can think of. I'm not sure how else to do it, to be honest. Uh, the only other thought I had, and I'm thinking about, I've been thinking about this as well, is I might um, print a backdrop off of Sky, and then potentially I can uh, buttress the backdrop, make it quite solid, quite thick, um, and maybe put some put a raft for it to sit on, which when you look at it from this side, you wouldn't be able to see. So maybe even draw holes in the side of the ship and actually put like bars across them. I'm not sure what, how I would do that. So anyway, there we are. It's not gone completely dead and it's still been worked on. It's just been worked on virtually in my head and I, and I didn't want it to like go too stale and you think I'd forgotten. What I also need to do, of course, is populate the ship. So that might be the next thing I actually can do is stick down the, um, the stuff which is being taken. So all the barrels and boxes and what have you and put the defenders in place. Though, having said that, I kind of need to know where the attackers are coming from and have the whole thing so I can so I can um, dress it properly. So maybe not. Don't know. Anyway, it is ongoing. I am working on it. It is a big project. It's a really, really complex one for me. And I need to resolve a lot of questions before I can actually start to uh, really glue things down. But yeah, I, I think I'm making progress and I will look forward to having another update for you soon. I went and found a really nice picture of the sky to use as a backdrop for this. And I've printed it out a couple of times on the laser printer. One two by two and one four by two, I think, or three by two. Uh, but for some reason, my printer is printing very stripy, which is a bit disappointing. I'm going to have to look into why that is. Uh, but they're really not good enough quality. I, I wouldn't have minded cutting them up and pasting them together and what have you. Uh, but they're just not good enough, particularly with how awesome I want this to look. So what I've done is I've contacted Sean from Sean's Bits Box, which if you don't subscribe to his channel, go and do so, he's awesome. He has a large um, format printer um, and does lots of awesome prints. And so I've sent him this picture, which I found online for free. I'll link to it below. Um, and he's gonna print that for me and send it over. But what that does mean, of course, is that this is gonna to have to wait because until I've got that backdrop, uh, until I know how I'm going to mount everything, as I've said, I can't really proceed. So I have done, uh, forgive the mess, I have done a little bit of kind of like prep work in terms of where things are gonna sit on this ship. And you can see it's gonna look really well, I think. Um, and we've got the two, um, so we've got the, the, the boss man can stand back here. Um, and there's space for like the the warriors and what have you to to be um, on the deck. Um, so there's plenty of room with that much uh, baggage on there. I do want to get this one on as well and this one. I'm particularly one of these two, but I need to clean the base up. Uh, but I'm not going to glue that down until I've got everything arranged. So I'm really stuck. So what's going to happen is this is going to have to go back um, in onto the pile um, and uh, wait for this backdrop to arrive. Uh, so I'll pick up another project in the meantime um, and uh, just uh, wait to wait until all the materials are here. Uh, but yeah, I'm pleased to have actually kicked on a bit with this um, and uh, shared a little bit of the progress. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I've talked about it, um, but uh, yeah, so it's probably gonna be another few weeks until we get back to this again. I had a, another mail call, but this was actually for specifically for a project. I'm very excited about this. This has come um, from Sean, uh, from Sean's Bits Box. Um, and if you don't follow him and watch his videos, you absolutely should, they're wonderful. Uh, I got him to print out the back uh, backdrop for the Dino Rider, um, sorry, for the dinosaur ship. I'm doing and it's arrived packed very well completely unopened so far so what we're going to do is get this open uh, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll have a look and see what it is uh, I think I'm going to have to flatten it for a bit before I can use it um, but yeah let's, let's get this open first and see what it looks like and uh, be very very excited about it together so here we are some business cards seanconnolly.com very nicely packed I do want to say Sean I really like the uh, use of Gaffer tape, that's my kind of packing. Look. Ex sound engineer here. Everything can be done with gaffer tape. There we are. And a note. Hey Beard, I noticed in your episode that the print had more blue in it. So I've done you a second one where I've bumped the blue a notch. 
I hope they suit the purposes, but if there are any problems, let me know and I will get another to you. All the best, Sean. What a lovely note, thank you very much. And they have printed out beautifully. Look at that. That's just amazing. Now I need to decide which one I like the best. They certainly do look perfect, Sean. What we're going to do now, uh, what I'm going to do now in this project <laughs> is uh, let these flatten a bit. So I'll go and put some weights on them and put them on a flat surface and leave them for a day or two. Um, and then I'll pick the one I like the best and that will then get pasted to a backboard. And then we will start assembling that diorama, which is also very exciting because while I've been waiting for this, which hasn't taken very long at all, to be fair, um, I've not done anything on it, as, as I said in the previous update, waiting to uh, have this and get, the, uh, get it all arranged so that I can work out where things are going to go. So it's really cool to have these. Thank you so much, Sean. Go and watch his YouTube channel. Go and check out his website, seanconnolly.com. And uh, yeah, give him some love. He deserves it. So this awesome print from Sean, uh, Sean Connolly, over at Sean's Bits Box, has been sat under a weight being flattened for the past two weeks. <laughs> For two reasons. One, I wanted it to be flat, and two, I have had a lot of other things on, and I didn't want to start this until I thought I would be able to crack on with it. And so I've finished a couple of projects, and so now we're back to have a look at this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this to the this mounting board. Now I've got a shelf under here at the moment. You can see this is the shelf that I'm going to use, and you can see that it is the perfect width, both the mounting board and the picture. So thank you very much, Sean. You've done that absolutely superbly, perfectly. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue the whole thing down onto this mounting board um, and then when it's dry, which I'll leave it overnight, I can come along with some sharp scissors and can trim the edge off, or maybe a knife, trim the top off and uh, and then that'll be my, my display. So that'll be my height. So I'll be going up to uh, up to that height. I am going to glue and weight this down um, in the games room on the big gaming table so I don't have to move it. Um, but I'll just be smearing PVA across the back of here or maybe over on the cardboard actually and then very carefully smoothing it down and then putting my big weights, these ones, on top like that so I can get a really good even pressure across um, and uh, yeah, can leave that overnight. So I'll put several of those across and I'll hold it down nicely and make sure it gets completely stuck. So yeah, very excited to get back to this. Been holding off obviously to receive the pictures and then <laughs> I did receive them and then I haven't even looked at them really because they've been waited. Um, but we're getting there now. Let's get this done. Let's get this uh, diorama finished. And uh, yeah, let's see, let's see how I work out <laughs> how I'm actually gonna mount the, uh, the flying things. That's the biggest challenge. I did this a week ago, and this week has just been so crazy, I've not even looked at it. So I've absolutely no idea how it's come out. Um, whether it's done it right or not, we'll find out. Looks like I might have a few artefacts from having put those rusty old things on, which is a bit of a shame, that's a bit careless of me. But it has been left a good long time to dry. <laughs> so I'll lift this off and just have a quick look. Yeah, that's pretty well. That's pretty well stuck down. Good. Right now, so the next thing that I'm going to need to do is cut this out uh, down the edge of the cardboard only at this stage, and then stick this to the uh, to the shelf. So stick this behind the shelf, and then I can start to work out the way I'm going to um, I'm going to attach it. Uh, I, I might not do that. I might actually stick this now to some foam to give it a little bit more strength. I wanted it on the cardboard. It's going to be the first and easiest thing for me to stick it to. Um, but I might actually do this to, um, to some foam now as well, just to, uh, and then I can glue that onto the, onto the, uh, the shelf. But I'm not totally sure, as you can tell. So uh, yeah, I'm going to think about it for a little bit more. I want this to be really right. I'm so pleased with this printout. Thank you again so much, Sean, your star. Um, it's really, really beautiful. Uh, and then I can start building up the clouds, uh, building up what the ground is going to look like at the bottom and then attach all the pieces in place. It's going to look wicked this, it's going to be such a cool diorama. So yeah, time to engage brain and uh, work out how I'm going to do this next. Whether I am going to attach the shelf here or whether I'm going to glue it to some foam, cut the bottom off and then stick the foam to the uh, XPS to the, to the uh, 
shelf. We'll see. Uh, I will bring you along when I've made my decision <laughs> and uh, we'll, well, when I come to the next step. I don't want to rush it, as I say. So, uh, yeah, I'm pleased that it's, it seems to have glued on very nicely there. So the next thing to do now, this is dry, is decide how I'm going to mount things. And so to that end, I have a bag of very dirty, which may not be used, holofill, which came out of an eaten, destroyed dog bed. I have some clean stuff as well, which I'll probably end up using, but that will be made, that will be purpose to build up clouds. Um, you can see that the, um, this is now fully dried and is nice and flat. Um, what I think I'm about to do now, and I'll do it on camera if I do, is I'm going to cut out the shape, uh, including cutting it from the cardboard, because what I'm then going to do is I'm going to mount it to um, something a bit thicker. I've realised I probably should have done this straight away, but it doesn't matter. It's not the worst thing in the world having this on mounting board. Um, but I probably want to uh, have something a little bit more structurally sound for it to be mounted to, because I'm then going to be bringing things forward and potentially um, I need to have, be able to support uh, metal coming or being being drilled through or whatever and uh, uh, having like, uh, for example, a, a pterodactyl kind of like attached by, by wire to the back so it's not just glue but it's actually got something structural and I probably need something a bit thicker than, than, than this uh, cardboard uh, so I'm going to glue it possibly I think to some uh, XPS, not to some wood, to some XPS could be a bit easier for me to work with. Uh, having said that, wood will be better for me to be able to drill through and attach things to. So first off, I'm going to cut that out and I'll, use, I'll, I'll do that on camera straight after filming this little section because what I've got here is a shelf, which is what it's going to be uh, going to be the base. And I've basically spray painted that black, which I don't normally use spray paint, but I spray painted that black because on top of that, we will have clouds like this, which will then be also be sprayed to uh, give the correct impression and to match up and marry up with the background. Um, and uh, what I'm probably going to be doing is having it pretty much entirely cloud as the base because it's quite a cloudy day in the backdrop and then building it up towards the corners with this. And what I'm probably going to need to do is build a framework of wire, which I'll then attach the clouds to. So the wire will be put into the um, into the wood, glued in place, let to set, and then I'll stick the uh, clouds around it. And what that means is this is a build which is out of my comfort zone. I wing it. That is how I work. You, any regular viewer of mine will know that. And uh, planning, I do plan, I think, but I generally, I react more than I plan, definitely, in my builds. And this is one where I need to work it out, work it out, work it out, make sure everything's right, put together a wire framework. That wire framework will also support the ship, the boat, which is here, as you can see. Um, so it needs to be quite strong. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a bit of an out, a bit of a, um, an outlier for me, a bit of a new experience. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and glue the backdrop to something a bit thicker, or at least cut the backdrop and, and find something to glue it to that's a bit thicker. And then I will start to plan out where the framework's going to go, how I'm going to actually position everything, how I'm going to attach everything, get that done. And once I've done that, it should just be a case of setting things in place, gluing them, and, it, and it's finished. Most of the effort is going to be in that wire framework. So most of my time on camera for this project is going to be in that wire framework. So um, yeah, let's see how well this goes. And first of all, let's get this, uh, let's get this picture cut. I'm going to make use of my new shorter Victor cutting bar, which I recommend so highly. And also the one, the, the slightly longer one that I've had for a little while, I'm going to get this cut. So I'm going to make use of a sharp Stanley knife. You can use a hobby knife, but I like a Stanley knife because you can get the blade nice and long and get it held nice and flat. And this is going to be, as I always say, do not be in a hurry when you're cutting things. Multiple gentle passes will give you a smoother cut than trying to cut it all in one go. And there we are. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So I'm going to get the rest of that cut on the other three sides. And uh, yeah, that's going to look really, really good. Um, a good cutting, a tall, a good cutting straight edge 
is absolutely top of my list of recommendations. Honestly, spend the money. They're not cheap, but they'll save you cutting and they give so much of a better, more stable, slip-free experience. Um, and I get nothing for saying that. Trust me, they don't, they don't sponsor me the amount of money I spend with them. But they're really, really worthwhile getting a really, really good cutting input, cutting edge. Do it. I wasn't really thinking straight. <laughs> and I glued on the um, bottom dorsal fin thing. And then I've realised that actually I can't hold this, I can't stand this boat up anymore to stick the, uh, the things on the top. So what I'm going to try to do is balance it on top of this um, bottle, the, this um, jug. Um, and I want to stick the, um, the cargo in place. Now... Hopefully that'll balance and it won't fall off, but it should dry pretty quickly because I'm just going to use super glue. So I probably should have done this before um, I had a really nice arrangement. Um, I don't want it to be too um, full. I have the I have I have all these things that I've printed out and painted up to stick on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my super glue, going to work out where I want things to go. I think. Uh, the way that it would probably be arranged would be down the centre spine here um, with the barrel, with the, with the um, crates um, and then potentially have them stacked up a bit um, and then have some of the smaller things kind of like the barrels and what have you maybe on top. Just trying to make it uh, quite a nice, um, and make it look like it's, uh, it's, it's got a lot, of, um, a lot of value on it which is why these uh, pirates are attempting to take it. Uh, so I'll just glue things on like that, but try to make it so I've got space around it for, for all of the, the characters that I want to have on this ship as well. So I'm going to get this done. Um, I'm, I'm not going to run the camera because as you can see it's going to be a little bit delicate and I don't want to be, uh, I want to be focusing and get this done as quick as possible. So as soon as I finish gluing it, I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. Um, and I have been kind of working on how I'm going to support and how I'm going to position this. Um, so once I've uh, done a little bit more on that and got something more to show you, uh, we'll go back over to the shelf and we'll have a look at how I'm actually going to um, support the backdrop and, uh, and actually support these uh, models all in their mid-air positions. So let's get some gluing done. I can't tell you how many times I caught this clumsily and almost knocked the whole thing over. <laughs> But I've managed to get everything in place. Uh, it's all—it's literally just been glued in, so um, I'm not going to take it down yet. Uh, but this gives me space to put the main guy here. Um, and I think that um, the... I think that on, on, the, on the bridge is going to be this, uh, the animal um, with, with, her, with his friend. Uh, people who watch more of my channel will recognise this as being the um, same figure as I put onto my, uh, did my painting um, for Paint for the Miniatures last month and did the diorama with the cliff face and all of the uh, greenery and you can see why I didn't want to do this on camera, it's very delicate. But anyway, those two are going to go on there and there's space for that and that was what I was most worried about. And then scattered around the rest uh, will be um, uh, like um, people throwing spears. Um, and I've got um, someone here with a bow um, and I've got, um, I'm not sure what she's doing, whether she's going to go in or not, like a little shepherd woman. Um, um, and this is going to be the most challenging one because this is the guy that I want to be falling off with an arrow in through, through his chest. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got quite a few um, figures here that I want to fit onto the actual ship. These are all the ones that are going to go on the ship. Um, and then I've obviously got to um, do the a pterodactyl as well. So I'm going to let that all go off and dry um, and then when that's dried I should then be ready to start actually doing the assembly. I've had some ideas of how I'm going to do the backdrop and how I'm going to support it. I um, need to spend a little bit more time in it before I'm going to put the camera on though. Um, but yeah, it's nice to be back to the hobby desk um, and to be making some progress on this and I think that just looks wicked. Those, that pile of uh, goods makes it look like a really, really uh, productive ship to both get to its destination safely and also rob. What I've realised is, is if I don't start this, and I have been putting it off because it goes against my natural inclination to just wing it, if I don't start this and I'll never get it done. So I'm going to put the camera on for a bit, I'm going to play around, this is probably going to take me quite a while. But my basic idea, my initial plan is to make use of these, this wire here, um, get, a, get a small drill or maybe even just a, a bradle or something like that so that I can push the, the uh, wood, this will get the uh, little wire, will go into the wood, and then I can 
use it to support and hold the ship as you can see probably not very well because where my hand is there we are so you can hold the ship at the angle and floating like this so i'm probably going to need to put a wire in here and a wire back here at least two maybe two wires here and maybe you have another one at the front under here and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to start working out where the wires are going to go and what i'm thinking i can do is because i'm going to have like clouds and what have you i can hide any uh, of the wire that goes above with potentially cloud looking things um, but i can also potentially on this one which can be coming up here i can have my pterodactyl attaching to the same wire so those are the sort of things i'm thinking of whether i do it like that maybe even better uh, but those are the sort of things that i'm thinking of and how i'm going to try to do it so this is going to be quite a convoluted and slow process like i said i will run the camera a bit um, just so you can see some of the uh, steps i'm going through but it'll probably end up taking me a couple of nights and a lot of effort to get this positioned and once i've got the ship in place which obviously also includes the dinosaur which is going to be even more complex because it's far harder for me to hide the dinosaur uh, being uh, supported than it is to hide the uh, behind the ship but I think I can probably do it I want the dinosaur to be something like this um, it's going to be coming over the front of the uh, of the display which isn't ideal so I might need to move everything back a little bit um, but I can potentially put a support in under here which won't be too obvious particularly if I put some cloud uh, clouds underneath um, so yeah, so once I've got these two in place and I can start to really plan out the rest of it and get the whole diorama done, I just need to start. So I'm just going to start. So that's actually worked pretty well. I'm quite surprised. <laughs> but I can balance the ship on these three and it works all right. I'm not gonna do it on camera now because it'll probably all collapse and go wrong, but I can. So what I'm now gonna try and do, and this is where this is now gonna take days because I'm gonna have to do this in stages, which I'm really bad at, I gotta be patient, is I need to put these two perfectly upright. So I'm working out because the smallest drill bit I've got is one mil. Uh, and these are half mil. I don't have one mil thick wire, which would have been even better. But I might have actually if I strip back some uh, some electrical cable. That might have some one mil. That was a thought. I might look at that. But it, I'll go and look at that after I've filmed this clip because if I can't find some better wire, um, and obviously if I do, then I'll be able to measure and do the bending without having to do all the diff difficult kind of juggling. I'm going to need to get something which is going to be able to go off and hold a little bit of a. Uh, be a bit more structural, a bit more rigid. Um, I can potentially use wood filler. That could work. But what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to go with milliput, which is really good for this sort of thing, I think, and should work well. So what I should be able to do is pack the milliput into the hole and then poke the um, this this in when it's slightly gone off, and then because um, it goes off quite quickly, and then leave it overnight. And when I've got these two in, then I'll be able to come along and get this set in place at exactly the right angle. Because unfortunately, I did screw up slightly, and this isn't going to. This isn't exactly um, horizontal below where I want it. Um, I, I was I had a slight problem with parallax. I think when I made the note, when I noted down where to drill. So well, I'm going to see if I've got any one mil copper. Um, and see if that's going to work. If not, I'll mix up some, I'll make up some very small amount of milliput, put it into these two holes, and then uh, when that's nearly gone off, I will then insert these and use my 90 degree things. I've got various items just on the shelf above my working. I always have things to hand if I can. Um, and I've got these two as well, so I can 
clamp and make sure everything's 90 degrees, leave it overnight and then in the morning come along and I'll be able to do the next step. Uh, and that next step will be putting this in place and putting a final one in at the back, then merely putting them in place and then I will start to work on the actual, um, on, on the dinosaur that's going to be coming over here. But first impressions, this is going to work. It's not going to be massively strong, but I think that with, I might put another couple in as well, with, with enough distributed, I think it's going to be easily supporting that weight as long as I'm not going around and being clumsy. Those of you that know me know that that's going to be the problem. So the next morning, and this is with two of the metal uprights done with the milliput and then the other one just supporting it and it's working <laughs> which is amazing I didn't think it would now I'm going to zoom in right in underneath you can see there's a little dotter's milliput there I put that as a backstop behind this bottom um, rib behind the, the um, dorsal fin um, and uh, that's working really well as well so what I'm probably going to end up doing uh, is and, I, and you can see it's balanced I'm not touching it what I'm probably going to end up doing is putting a, a little bit of um, of milliput around the base of each of these uprights just in the same way because that will hold it better they're not actually very well held but that's they, they can still rotate the metal but that's fine because it's going to make it easier for me to fit and then when I'm glued in place I can add some more um, and more more stuff but I mean I'm just so pleased that it is actually supporting the weight and it's actually relatively stable though I am also stood here panicking it's going to fall over so I will put another metal upright at the back here I think to attach to the back fin um, and then that'll be four points and I think that should then be enough and then I can move on to the dinosaur that was amazing I can't believe it worked I'm so pleased there's some clipping and trimming and what have you I need to do and I'll probably end up as well um, once I've got it in place painting the uh, metal so that it's a bit more hidden um, but uh, but yeah I'm, I'm rambling a bit because I'm a bit excited and I'm a bit shocked it works yay a little bit more progress on this I've managed to get the dinosaur pretty much in place it's still very very kind of iffy and scary and I'm terrified of touching it but that's roughly in the position I want it now I did try to use and unfortunately I've cut which is a shame I did try to use some plastic kind of like uh, um, straws but they're just not strong enough um, I could potentially have used the straw and found a thinner uh, bit of, of uh, wood to go inside to um, support the straw to give it a bit more rigidity because that was a problem but I, I I think this is going to be fine this is a barbecue skewer and it actually ended up being the same three millimeters as I needed so this is just all currently still balanced there's no glue involved yet which is incredible uh, but it's looking great I mean the the movement is perfect um, I can potentially um, make use of a little bit of a bend here or maybe uh, change my drill hole to give a little bit more um, angle as you can see there is some play um, that's probably more likely how I'm going to do it so what we're looking at is the the ship has the uh, dinosaur has dived and now is trying to pull up to get away um, and what this is now going to do, I'm, 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 I'm going to think a little bit longer, but I'm, I'm really, really close. Uh, what this is probably going to do, I'm going to glue in place what I've got now. Um, I'm going to paint the wood. I'm going to work out where I, um, work out where I want to cut this, but stick the uh, try to glue everything in place so that this is a bit, a bit safer. Uh, and then if I need to add more. Um, support I can um, I'm looking and wondering whether I might add a couple more wire supports to the boat I want it to be be really strong this with a single one is fine but I'm going to, need to paint these and hide these and then what I can do is I can start to put in place the pterodactyl attacks now the backdrop I'm going to attach to the back of the um, of the of the shelf so I'm probably going to uh, uh, stick it to some XPS uh, um, and then attach that to the back of the shelf because uh, I, I'm going to make use of the whole depth I think so that's the other thing that's been decided while I've been playing with this but uh, yeah pretty excited I've done this just in a couple of minutes I've had through the day um, and uh, yeah really really excited to see it coming together and actually looking like like something I'm amazed it's a it's, it's a good fun project this really really stretching me pretty happy with how this has held up I've actually left that like that all afternoon and uh, it's not moved at all so it looks like it's a pretty stable setup 
which is good. And I'm happy with the actual arrangement, the angles. So what I'm going to do now, um, I've decided the next step that I'm going to do is I have some milli putt that I've just mixed up and I'm going to very, very carefully go in and uh, put it around the base of each of these metal here uh, and probably also glue in place this wood with some wood glue um, and build up around it with the uh, milli putt as well. Uh, and then I will put the boat and the uh, uh, dinosaur back on top once I've done that, position it exactly how I want it and then leave it overnight because then when I take the ship off and the dinosaur off in the morning it'll be uh, they'll be completely held in place exactly how I want them to and that will mean that will be easier for me then to do any more supports because I do think I want to drill another support um, so I might even do that this evening as well there's at least one more support I want to put in so yeah I'm, uh, I'm gonna get that done I'm not gonna film it because it's gonna be very fiddly and I'll be getting in the way of the camera and probably saying things I don't like to say on these on this channel uh, using language I won't put on this channel uh, but I'll bring it back when it's all done and when I'm setting it up overnight uh, show what it looks like uh, and then hopefully this will work continue working because it's uh, it's working all right so far so so far so good I've done that um, I what I've ended up doing is putting some PVA at the base of the wooden stick I've not built up around it yet but I can do that and then I've built up around each of the four metal Po um, supports that I've done and then I've set the whole thing at roughly the angle I want it and now I'm going to be very careful and work around it and leave it overnight I've got a few bits and pieces I've been to do but I'll have to go up that end of the uh, of the bench and leave this here I've not actually positioned it very well it's right where I normally work but never mind that's fine so yeah hopefully this is going to be successful uh, and tomorrow I can take the uh, items off um, I'll have the metal in exactly the position I need and then I can uh, shape this one here to potentially accept one of the other um, <clears throat> one of the other flying creatures uh, I could potentially glue this one on here and then have an, have the the jumping person uh, jumping off of a pterodactyl but I'll play around with that once this is all dried when I'm not going to be scared of touching it so yeah progress is good I've left this 24 hours so it should be nicely set the stick was just done with PVA and that pulls off nicely and that's pretty solid I mean this isn't trying to be structural as such it just wants to support it and then go on the shelf and you know just make it look nice so that's strong enough this I'm really impressed that this has stayed so well so if I lift that straight off you can see the four wires that I've put in so far and they're pretty nicely done so what I need to do now, what I'm going to do now, is think about where these are going to go, whether I'm going to attach any other of the, of the uh, pter a pterodactyl to maybe to this one. Probably take off the, uh, um, the masking tape um, and clip the, these where they're not going to be, uh, <laughs> go there a little bit too, too, uh, too long. Um, this one is still rotating, but that's fine because I actually wanted that to rotate. So I'm pleased about that because I want to rotate it into a, the edge of the uh, boat and um, glue it in place. Uh, now I have another to drill in and stick in there, which I'm going to do. Uh, and um, Angela was saying, and she might be right, that I might want to put a few more in. So that's my that's my task now. Now that I have those four in place that are um, you know good enough, they're going to support the uh, the ship well enough. And then once I've got those all glued and secured in exactly the same way, so I'll leave it again overnight. I won't leave it right here, which is directly in my hobby area. <laughs> I'll put it somewhere else. Um, then I will start to arrange the pterodactyl properly. And then that will be more drilling and more of the same. And then when everything is done, I will then be able to paint it and then start working on the, um, on, on the clouds underneath. Uh, and also look to attach the back, the back drop. It's going well. I'm shocked, but it's going well. So let's see what I can get done this evening uh, or tomorrow, but let's see what I get done in the next steps. Um, um, as I say, putting a few more supports in for the ship and then working out uh, where the pterodactyl will go. That's, the, uh, that's what I'm going to do now. Onwards. It's the return of shaky cam because it's going to be easier for me to show what I've done. So as you can see, I'm starting to 
really build the story and if you think that you're supposed to view it from down here you can see that I've got low down um, we've got the person at the back here who is actually pointing in the wrong direction <laughs> um, we'll be flying towards that's rotated slightly um, so the idea here is roughly that so that one's coming along and taking a pot shot maybe should actually also be slightly coming up sorry bad camera work but something a bit more like that so that the path of that they're sighting down is going to be towards the bows of the ship then we've got this one here who is also rotated they're all not nothing's glued yet but this one here is going to be looking across uh, and the falling person is going to be down here so it'll be like they've just shot an arrow and the person that they've shot is over here coming off the boat and then we have this one that is in completely the wrong angle will be flying a, uh, at a much like at an angle like this and then jumping off of that one we have the jumping one so that will be being that will not, not focusing at all uh, there we are she will be jumping off of that pterodactyl so um, another thing that I did is I found a smaller drill bit which has made this a lot better so I've actually got the correct size drill bit now for the wire I'm using um, so I need to have less huge, smaller uh, monstrous great big, uh, uh, filler which I'm going to have to paint um, but yeah pretty much happy with where everything is now uh, the last thing that I need to do in terms of drilling is work out where the falling person is going to go um, I think that's going to be quite an easy one like I say, and then what I'll be able to do is paint the base uh, again, another coat of black which will cover up and, and, and paint all of the bits of wire. I need to glue the wire in and then I need to do that and then I'll start building up the, uh, the, the clouds. But yeah, slowly getting there, I'm quite pleased. I've finally managed to get a little bit more time on this and I've spray painted up some hollow fill as you can see and uh, tried to make it so that it would fit in okay. I am going to do more, uh, this is my first attempt. I think I need to get more grey in it, certainly for over here, but blue with grey for over here. This is looking quite nice in this area. I'm going to fill up most of the base I think with this and I'm certainly going to build up the sides and it might mean that I have to put some more uh, metal in that I can then slot the, uh, um, <coughs> slot the hollow fill up uh, so, but yeah, it's a really good start, I'm really pleased with how that's looking and uh, it's going to work really, really well and hide a lot of these wires obviously uh, and I think probably it will end up being glued down with contact adhesive so I'll be putting some spray and pressing it in and then it will just be enough because it's only a, it's not going to be handled very much so, so long as it doesn't like blow away then that's fine. So yeah, so I'm going to spray some more. This is two different colours of blue, like a turquoise and a sky blue, and then grey and black. Uh, and I'm just using aerosols for this. Uh, so I'll probably end up doing a load more, like I say, get that all stuck in place. I'll bring you along, I'll film again when I've got enough quantity of the holofill. Um, and when I've potentially worked out exactly where it's all going to go, like I say, I think I might need to put another couple of bits of wire just along the sides here, just so that I can build a nice big kind of the cloud that's in the backdrop here could be coming forwards and down there so yeah i might have to do that uh, i'll bring you along when i've done that show what it looks like and then we'll get to gluing and then we're pretty much entering the home straight and finishing up which is really exciting i can't wait to see this so hopefully i'll have this done in the next next few days if i manage to get time so i'm having a lot of fun just out of shot over there <laughs> playing with uh, the polyfill, um, well, so hollow fill, not polyfill, hollow fill. And what I've realized I need to do is actually get the backboard done properly. So I've got some of this one centimeter thick uh, uh, blue um, expanded polystyrene, um, XPS. And uh, what I'm gonna do now, I've cut it out so that it's the right height. This here is the depth of the actual um, shelf. So I will be gluing the shelf to this, but first of all, what I'm gonna do I think first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go this down to the XPS. So uh, so that will then be a nice, secure, upright, as you can see, be solid enough. It's gonna be mounted on the wall anyway. Um, and then I can glue that in place and then I'll be able to start actually fixing the hollow fill in place. So I'm gonna use PVA for this, I think. Um, I might use the um, strong glue. I might use contact adhesive. 
I will let you know what I use, but then I'll weight it all down, leave it to dry, and then we'll, the next thing will be to fix this in place and actually start gluing the um, start start gluing the holofill in place. So yeah, progress. Let me give you a brief reenactment of uh, what just happened. <laughs> uh, and almost just happened again, actually, because that's backwards. And that gives you a hint of what just happened. I went and had a look at my backdrop and it's glued on perfectly. There is no shifting that off of this blue XPS. None whatsoever. It's absolutely brilliant. I did use spray glue, which is really, really good and really secure. And I've gone to it and <laughs> I've stuck it all upside down. Oh dear, never let it be said that I don't make stupid mistakes. So what I was about to do was drill some holes in the back of this, put some small, um, just basically cocktail sticks in and then glue it on with cocktail sticks to make it more secure. And that's not going to happen now, is it? <laughs> so what's going to happen now is I'm going to cut this lip off here, which is no longer needed because, yep, yeah, I'm going to have to mount it on top of the backboard like that rather than behind it uh, which is annoying <laughs> um, I might uh, no I'm not gonna bother uh, but what I, I'm not gonna bother trying to put a, 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 anything behind it but what I will do is I will drill now and put in place some cocktail sticks so I'll drill and glue the cocktail sticks uh, here along the back and then when I come to do this I will um, be able to push it down, uh, have a little bit more security coming, um, so it's got a little bit more kind of integrity, and then glue it in place. So I'll get my um, drill out and uh, get that done, and show what it looks like when it's uh, when when it's in place. Uh, but yeah, that did that did make me laugh. What a what an idiot! <laughs> look at look at how great it is. We could have the upside down dinosaur, I suppose. But yeah, no, not happening. Let's save it again. As you can see, I've put the first of the um, cocktail sticks in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the second one in as well. Now, I've only got two of those straight edges. Actually, I might have a third, so I might have to put one in the middle, uh, because I do need to clamp it, because um, we need these to be absolutely vertical, and that's what I'm doing there. So what I've got is my Dremel. Try not to knock <laughs> the... Uh, um, the one that I've clamped in place and uh, what I've done is I've drawn a line here which is exactly the depth of the blue foam and so I'm going to put my hole in in the middle of that line so let's get that drilled just make a nasty noise I might skip this or put some music on I do love my Dremel so that's been drilled so what we'll do now is just uh, get rid of that dust and then the best way to apply glue to a cocktail stick that you want to go into an owl is get the glue towards the end of your pot and put it on the stick. <laughs> so that now can be inserted in and that's actually gone in much better, much more vertical than the first one. So um, I might even be able to get away without clamping that. Just leave that to go off. And that now means that, I, I mean, it's gonna be a bit of a pain and I might actually end up um, putting these in half. I'm not sure. I might end up snipping these in half, putting half in because it's gonna be very hard to press that the back down over this and keep it going straight without it going all wonky. That's gonna be quite a tough challenge. So I might actually make those slightly less prominent. Um, so yeah, I will grab myself. I'm going to do that. That's me making a decision. Grab some wire, some snips, uh, which is the really cool way to cut this stuff. Work it roughly how high you want it. Let's cut them in half, about there. There we are. And then I might need a, a bigger drill bit actually, having done that. That doesn't want to go in at all. I'm going to need a little bit of a bigger drill bit. So that was perfect size drill bit for when I was putting the spike in, but I need the next size up to be able to insert the body of the cocktail stick. So there we are, you've seen me as I work properly. Uh, I will get that re-drilled, get that glued in, I'll put the rest of the spikes on. I'm probably only going to put four in, one on each end, and then split the difference. So put them in quarters, that'll be enough. Uh, otherwise, again, it'll be really, really difficult to, uh, to fit it. 
learned that lesson uh, and then I'll let them dry and then next time I'll film will be when I'm actually looking to glue the backboard in place. All right, so this is going to be fun. I've uh, set up a little bit of a form for me to or a guide so that I can, when I push this backboard down, it will hopefully go down straight. So what I'm going to do is going to run a bit of PVA and I'm going to do PVA on this. I think it's the right, right glue to use. It will go off overnight but with the pins hopefully it will be quite a quite a secure bond anyway so I'm going to beat a PVA down the edge here between the two lines and make sure I put some on top of the uh, cocktail sticks and skewers so there we are and what I've done is I have glue I have um, clamped a 90 degree at this end here so that's just clamped to the desk I'm going to make sure that I do it not upside down <laughs> again and I should be able to go up against that guide and that will give me the um, that will give me the, the correct location to the right so I'm, so I'm going to go down vertically and fingers crossed I can just push down like that. There we are. And that has a little bead of PVA to clean up front and back. It's not perfect, but to be fair, I think that's going to be good enough. I'm not going to lift it and drop it again. It's a little bit out. It's a little bit too far about this end, a little bit too far about that end. There's a slight overlap. Cut them in out, but it's good enough for me. So yeah, I'll let that dry. I'm gonna, I've got uh, some some PVA here that's seeped, so I'll just uh, run that along, tidy that that bead, and then I can put that to dry overnight. And tomorrow I will be able to start actually putting the clouds in and then fitting things in place. That's really exciting. So yeah, excellent. Ah, the backdrop glued on really really nicely. I mean, it's not gonna take a lot of battering, but. That is definitely secure enough when you think that this is going to be sitting on a shelf. Oh, it's going to be a shelf itself and it'll be up against the wall. So that'll be very secure. So the next thing, we're getting close to the end of this. Very excited. The next thing is to start fixing in these clouds. Now, I don't want the clouds to be too bulky up the front. So, and I, But I also don't want to be putting too much glue on it because that's going to be really messy. So I think roughly that arrangement is going to be pretty good. And what I'm doing is I'm actually pressing it down over the top of some of these um, some of these uprights. You can see it's actually coming through on this one and through on this one and here. Uh, and obviously the, the, the boat actually sits over the top of this and then we've got a flying, uh, we've got a falling body here and a couple of the fl flying creatures are going to go on some of these. Uh, so, so yeah, so I just need to kind of glue in place in a few places, not very many places, just to tack it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use PVA and I'm going to get myself a bit of PVA on a plate and with a brush I will put a dab of PVA where I want it and then I'll probably clamp it in place and then hopefully the PVA won't come through the, uh, the material to land uh, to uh, hold the clamp after I try to remove it. Um, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> this could go badly wrong, this could destroy the whole thing, but you just got to keep going, haven't you? Um, at the end of the day, we're trying to build a hold our arm and not just get it to this stage. And this is the final and most critical stage, I think. So. I'll probably pop some music on, move the camera because you are a little bit in the way <laughs> where, where the camera is now. But uh, the idea will be to basically do that and then just gently press, don't even need to clamp it, gently press a little bit towards there and that now, when that's dried, that will hold it in place enough. Because again, this is not a gaming piece, this is just a display piece. So once again, just a little bit of PVA there and that will now allow me to just tack that down how I want it, like so, and that should hold it in place. So it's going to be a very delicate operation. I will want to put more. I have more material here, so I've got quite a lot of material that I can use. I might put some more along here. I'll almost certainly want to glue that down along the front so it doesn't come away. 
But I don't want it to be too overwhelming. I want it to look like it's the clouds coming forward. It's obviously going to, you're going to have to turn off your, uh, uh, a little bit of a suspension of belief because it's not perfect. I've not got the colour match perfect, which is a shame. But I have got the nice white here going to the white there, which I'm quite pleased about. So yeah, I'll move the camera, put some music on, get this done, and then the final step is going to be put, well, the next to final step is putting the ship in place. And the final step is gluing the crew on. That's looking really good. That didn't take very long at all. But what I realised was that I was almost certainly going to need to adjust things slightly around the ship, particularly. And I'm glad I did because you can see that, oh, well, you, you, you will have seen that there was a little bit of faff getting it around this corner and touching it up there. So, what I'm actually about to do now, and this is pretty exciting for me, is actually glue the ship in place. So, I can take this out of the way for now, and I'm going to stick the ship down. And I'm also probably going to stick falling dude down because I can do that as well he's going to go on there obviously so uh, we can put falling dude there and uh, once once I've glued that I'll leave that to dry uh, let that set and go off but while I'm doing that I will be making sure that all of my arrangements of clouds around it are okay so for example I'll be putting some more clouds in in this area here and I might put a little bit more around below him actually even before I stick him in might just put a bit in now but this is working out really nicely I mean it is a uh, like I said a suspension of disbelief a little bit in that uh, there's a bit of a um, it's obviously you know <laughs> holofill um, but it looks great <laughs> and I love it so I don't care <laughs> I'm very happy so a little bit of super glue and uh, then I will continue on with that process and I will uh, run the camera even though it's probably a bit odd to watch but I will run the camera and get the rest of it done. If I can even get the dinosaur glued in place this, uh, in this, I will as well. And then, and then I will do the uh, actual attacking pterodactyls later. I want to make sure that this is all set and secure. So I'll be using super glue to glue this down. Um, that's going to be good enough. I have these awesome Loctite pen applicators that I really, really like. They work really well, give you a really good application. Uh, so yeah, so I'll get that done and uh, then leave it to dry probably overnight to come back to it tomorrow um, and finish it off but how how cool is it to be getting so close to completing this The next thing is to glue these uh, pterodactyl in place and you can see they're a little bit oddly positioned at the moment that's because I need to glue them like this and I'm going to bend the wire to the angle I need it for this one and for this one. This one's perfect, very very pleased with that one. So just use super glue again to glue them in place, I won't run the camera because it's a bit fiddly. They're just positioned at the moment uh, so yes I will be, uh, I'll be doing that with um, with super glue, let them let that go off. Shouldn't take too long, and then uh, and then it will be a case of uh, of bending them into shape, and then the jumping attacker will then be glued onto the wing so that she is jumping across, and then I'm going to start to populate the ship, which is very exciting. I've nearly finished doing the clouds, not quite nearly. There's a couple more bits and pieces I want to do, but um, but yeah, let's get these pterodactyl in place. 
And there we are, they're in place and they're glued. I've put a couple more bits and pieces of clouds on in places as well. I think I might need to clamp some of them just to make them right. So let me zoom out so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so I want to have cloud around this. So if I just clamp around it rather than to it, that should hold it in place. Uh, uh, maybe not. Maybe just clump at the top like that. Uh, that's not working. Hmm. Might just have to hope. I think I just have to hope on that one. But yeah, so these are done. So what we're going to do now is uh, get back to the point is start to stick the characters in place. Now, because of the angle that the boat is at, which is a violent angle and would not be very supportable for long, I'm going to have to use um, the sub glue to speed up the dry and this kind of stuff that speeds the drying up. So otherwise they'll fall over. So there we are, there's the uh, the captain. And then standing next to him is going to be the, hopefully if it works, is going to be this duo here. So I might glue those together separately. So what I'll do anyway, I'm going to get all the, everything glued on place. I'm not going to run the camera for too long uh, for, for, for all of this because it's going to be a bit difficult to do and I'm going to be making a lot of changes and running around. Um, but there's going to be things like my archer is, there's going to be an archer stood there. I'm going to be having this guy here who's throwing, this lady here who's throwing a, um, a javelin is going to be there. Um, and um, I'm going to put, like I say, the, uh, the woman with the, with the pet next to the to the owner to the to the main guy and then that will be glued on top there but that will obviously happen at the end so i'm going to assemble and put in place all of these figures and then i'll bring you back and that will pretty much be it done Well, there we are. That really was a fun build and the results are brilliant. And I must admit, I walk past it every day. It's on my corridor, just out that, that door behind me. And I get to see it every day and I love it. And I look at it and I see things in it. Even though I built it, I see angles and views and what have you in it. And it's just so fun to see. That was a really, really cool build. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this longer form. I hope that you will check out the shorter form video and let me know what you think in the comments there as well. I respond to them all do say hi. And I'll wrap up by saying, as I always do, please do stay safe, stay well, and stay healthy.